Hi everyone, it's Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm excited to be collaborating with my friend Sin over at Stampin' Munchkins. And for our collaboration, we decided to use stencils. So the products that I'll be using are the whole shebang stamp set from Casual Fridays, the Currents stencil from A Colorful Life Designs, the Don't Worry, Be Happy stamp set from Papery Ink, and the Giraffe stencil from Whimsy Stamps. So I wanted to show you the first card that I'll be creating using the Currents stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. But the second card that popped up, the card with the mermaids and the fish, that was my very first time in using the Currents stencil, which being that it was called Currents, I automatically saw that as water. So it worked very well for my little mermaid and fish cards. But one of the comments on that video that was left by Amanda over at Rise and Procrastinate read something to the effect of, I love how you used the zebra stripe stencil for water, which I didn't even see this stencil as zebra stripes. So a huge thank you to Amanda for the inspiration because I decided to use the Currents stencil as zebra stripes for my first card. I started out with a piece of Nina Classic Crest cardstock that's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I started to do some ink blending with some Catherine Pooler inks. The darker pink is Party Dress and the lighter pink is It's a Girl. I used a makeup blending brush that I picked up off of Amazon to do the ink blending. Once I had the pink inks blended, I used Gold Galaxy Brilliance ink to add some shimmer to the very bottom of that card panel. Since the Brilliance ink is a pigment ink, I decided to use a mini ink blending tool instead of a makeup brush, just so I could go in with a heavier hand and get more coverage a little bit faster. After the ink blending was done, I placed my Currents slash Zebra Stripe stencil on top of the ink blended panel. And I did use some Pixie Spray on the back of the stencil because it is a pretty delicate stencil. Then I used a smaller ink blending brush with Memento Tuxedo Black ink to do my stenciling. And I did go in with a very heavy hand on the stencil because I wanted to have the black stripes be very deep black. And a tip for using this stencil, you'll notice that I have it actually in a horizontal orientation for the stenciling and that I was going in an up and down motion with the blending brush. Because it is so delicate, there was a spot up towards the top where I started to go in my usual circular motion, and it did lift that stencil even though it had pixie spray on it. So, I have found that it is much easier for me to have the stencil in a horizontal orientation to do the blending with this particular stencil. Once I was done stenciling with the black ink, I cleaned off my stencil and my workspace, and then I put the stencil back on top of my card panel. And this one was pretty easy to line up because of that wider stripe that's down towards the right-hand side. And then I grabbed some Martha Stewart glitter paste. I mixed it up really well, and I used my palette knife just to apply the glitter paste up at the very top of the card panel. Then I grabbed my stencil pal and I used that to drag the glitter paste all the way down that card front. And I have found that this little stencil pal makes it so much easier to spread the glitter paste around. The palette knife that I used to apply the paste up at the top, it's a little bit flimsy and a little bit thin. So just to have it glomped up up at the top there and then drag it down with the stencil pal, I got a much more even coat using that little tool. After I was done with the glitter paste, I took the stencil off and you can see all the beautiful shimmer on top of the black stripes and I set that panel aside so that it could dry. Next, I grabbed a piece of Nina Classic Crest cardstock and inked up my stamp with the Party Dress ink by Katherine Pooler and stamped the sentiment down. I did stamp it twice because it was a brand new stamp to me. I wanted to make sure that I got a really nice crisp impression. And I ran it through my die cut machine with a double stitched polygon die from Honeybee Stamps. I'll make sure to have everything linked in the description box below for you, as well as a link to Sin's video, which I encourage you to head on over to her channel and check it out. She does some amazing cards 
and she also has an online store if you would like to support her as well. Anyway, to finish up this card, I did trim that panel down to four by five and a quarter and used liquid glue to adhere it to a piece of white card stock that was cut slightly larger. And then I adhered that to the front of a top folding black note card. For the sentiment, I just used a little bit of foam tape on the back side of that and adhered that in place. And then off camera, I ended up adding a couple of enamel dots just to gussy that card up a little bit. Moving on to the second card, I'll be using a giraffe stencil to create the pool water on the slimline card. And here's a look at the first card I created using the giraffe stencil as a giraffe print. I was inspired to use my giraffe stencil because my favorite things had recently released a stencil called the Perfect Pool Pal or Perfect Pool Stencil. And when I saw how it was being used to create the look of water, I knew that I could use my giraffe stencil to create the same type of look. I cut a piece of Nina Classic Crest cardstock down to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and I used some Scotch removable tape to tape the stencil down to my cardstock. And I have a piece of blue painter's tape at the top of the stencil to hold the stencil in place. I used an ink blending brush with tumbled glass distress ink and just started stenciling. I wasn't trying to get a perfect blend. I wasn't too worried about whether or not I went off the edge because I am gonna end up moving that stencil down a little bit. I just wanted to get a coat of ink down on that first layer. Once I reached the end of the stencil, I picked it up and I moved it down to the other end of the card and finished up stenciling that first layer of ink. And the next step is how you start to get the pool water look. I lifted up the stencil, I put it back to the left side of the card, but I turned it. So now you'll notice that my blue painter's tape is on the right hand side. And then I did a second coat of ink on the left side of the card panel. I shifted the stencil over, I didn't turn it, I just shifted it, and stenciled on the right side of the card. After I had that second pass of stenciling done, I lifted the stencil up and turned it a third time and moved it back over to the left-hand side of the card. And now you'll notice that my blue painter's tape is on the bottom. Once I finished stenciling that, I scooched the stencil back over to the right side of the card panel for a third time and did another coat of ink. Again, I didn't turn the stencil when I just scooched it down the card. Once I had all of the stenciling done and I removed the stencil, I did go over that card panel um, just to fill in some of the white stripes that were left behind, just so that they weren't quite so bright white. To finish up the card, I used the wonky stitched slimline dies from Cat Scrappiness and I cut a frame using Nina Classic Crest cardstock. I used liquid glue on the back of that and adhered that on top of my stenciled panel. The little critters that I'm going to be adhering to the front of that are from the Don't Worry Be Happy stamp set from Papery Ink. And I did do all of the coloring off camera just in the interest of time. After I adhered the pool panel to the white frame, I did put my Misty on top of it just to hold it down and apply a little bit of pressure so the glue had some time to grab on really well. Next, I used my tape runner and adhered that panel to the front of my slimline card. And my card base is also from Nina Classic Crest cardstock, and it started out at 8.5 by 7. Then I scored it at 3.5 on the 7 inch side, so my finished card is 3.5 by 8.5. I did have my brother scan and cut machine cut out all of my little critters for me. I used liquid glue to adhere all of them to the front of the card, and that finishes up my second card for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to click that link and check out Sin's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.